All right, we're back to play some more Doki Doki Literature Club. Last time we didn't have much going on, but we're gonna see what else might be in store for us. So let's get started with this video. I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more. But at the same time, I would feel bad for distracting her from reading. You know, I don't remember the voices I was doing from before, so I'm just gonna do whatever. I catch a glimpse of the cover of her book. It looks like the same book that she lent to me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. Ah, uh, crap. I think she noticed me looking at her. She sneaks another glance at me, and our eyes meet for a split second. But that only makes her hide her face deeper in her book. S sorry. I, w I was just spacing out. I mutter this, sensing I made her uncomfortable. Oh, it's fine. If I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. But I'm just rereading a bit of this, so... That's the book you gave me, right? Mm-hmm. I wanted to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason. Just curious, how come you have two copies of the same book? Ah, uh, well, when I stopped at the bookstore yesterday... Uh, that's, that's not what I meant. I mean, I just happened to buy two of them. I, I see. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decided to let it go. I'll definitely start reading it soon. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and relatable story. Is that so? What's it about anyways? Well... Mm, Yuri closes the book and scans her eyes over the back. Sorry. Itch. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There's an... There's an anom... Uh, there's an ominous looking eye symbol in the front cover. All right. I just wanted to make sure I didn't accidentally give anything away. Basically, it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long lost younger sister. But as soon as she does so, her life gets really strange. She gets targeted by these people who escape from a human experiment prison. Interesting. And while her life is in danger, she needs to desperately choose who to trust. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationships and her life starts to fall apart. That's kind of... It's kind of dark, isn't it? Yuri made it sound like it was going to be a nice story, so that dark turn came from nowhere. Aha! Yuri gently giggles all of a sudden. Are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Goshen? No, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy these kinds of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. That's kind of creepy. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri's into those things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just that those kind of stories... They challenge you to look at life from a strange new perspective. I guess. When horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to be evil, but because they have their own goals or their own philosophy that they believe in. Then suddenly, when you thought you related to the protagonist, they're made out to be the naive one for letting their one-sided morals interfere with the villain's plans. I, I'm, I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's all right then. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts, I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I start talking too much. That's... I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. 
At least I can... The least I can do is listen. It's a literature club after all. Ah, uh, that's... Well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it, right? Y you don't have to. <laughs> what are you saying? Just a moment ago, you said you were looking forward to it. Uh, let me just get the book. I quickly retrieve the book that I had put into my bag. Alright, it's fine if I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. Uh, yeah. Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. That is, reading in company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Uh, Alright. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not particularly a bad thing. Honestly, I prefer to read alone. Just like, for real though. Because... I feel that way too. Like, if I read with somebody around, I can feel their presence. And I'm like, I kind of just want to read my book. It's kind of hard to read my book with you just, like, sitting there next to me. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat com comforting. I was going to say confusing. Comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book book instead S sorry I was just Yuri you really apologize a lot don't you I I do I don't really mean to sorry I mean <laughs> just just stop apologizing here this should work right I slide my desk until it's up against Yuri's and then hold my book more between the two of them Oh, between the two desks. I was like, between the two what? Her breasts? Uh, I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we each lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. It feels like my left arm is in the way, so I instead use my right hand to hold open the book. Or hold the book open. Uh, I guess that makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Here. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. Uh, I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way I turn the page and Yuri slides it under her thumb after it flips to her side. But in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer together than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. If you know what I mean. <laughs> it's... it's, it's uh, <laughs> It's as if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face and she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? Eh? To turn the page. Oh, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted for a second. I glance over at Yuri's face again and our eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Uh, that's okay. You're not used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a little bit longer. It's probably the least I can do. Since you've been so patient with me. Y yeah. Thanks. Because that's that's the problem that I, I'm not used to reading. It's exactly the problem. Not the fact that we're sitting next to a beautiful girl. Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. <laughs> Instead, I just assume that she finishes the page before me so I can turn it. So I can turn it by my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. My thumb gently letting go of the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it under her own thumb. Hey, Yuri. This might be a little silly thought, but... The main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. You think so? How does she? 
Well, I guess it. I guess she's more blunt in a lot of ways. But she also second guesses a lot of the things that she says and does. Like she's afraid she'll do something wrong. It's not like I can see into your head or anything. But they're kind of reminiscent of or reminiscent. Reminiscent of some of your mannerisms. I I see. Yuri may remain silent for a moment. But Goshen that's probably a terrible thing to have in common with her. Ugh, that's so embarrassing you think that. W wait, I didn't mean it in a bad way or anything. Sorry, I really didn't know you were self-conscious about that sort of thing. I guess I more meant that as kind of, that it's kind of cute. Uh, what are you saying all of a sudden? Okay, everyone. <laughs> I think it's about time we share today's poem with each other. We might not have enough time if we wait too long. Ah. Uh, Yuri exhales, spared from finishing her thought. Is that all right, Yuri? You look kind of down. I'm sorry if you haven't been looking forward to this. Uh, it's it's not. It's fine. Yuri releases her th her hand from the book, causing it to close on top of my thumb. <laughs> Alright. I guess I'll do some more reading tonight. Or would you prefer I only read it with you? Um... I guess I don't have too much of a preference either way. Hmm. In that case, I'll read a little more tonight. It'll be more fun to read with you after it picks up a bit, you know? That's good reasoning. In that case, feel free to finish the first two chapters in your own time. Alright. I stand up. I make a mental note of where I left off in the book, then slip it back into my bag. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? Y yeah My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. Ah, it's not that embarrassing to write a poem. I couldn't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't wait! Sayori and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sayori is on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. Who should I show my poem to first? Uh, let's go with Yuri. Yuri seems the most experienced, so I should start with her. I can trust her opinion to be fair. As Yuri reads the poem, I notice her eyes lighten. Exceptional! Uh, what was that? Did, did I say that out loud? Yuri first covers her mouth, but then ends up covering her whole face. I, uh, he's going to hate me. Um, you really didn't do anything wrong, Yuri. Huh? That's, I, I guess you're right. What, what am I getting so nervous for? <laughs> Yuri takes a breath. So, what kind of writing experience do you have? Your use of imagery and metaphors indicates you've written a lot of poetry before. Really? Well, that's a huge compliment coming from you. This is actually my first time, really. Huh. Yuri stares at me blankly, then looks at my poem again. Well, I know that. I just meant, um... Yuri trails off, unable to find an excuse. She traces her finger along the words in the poem, as if breaking it down more thoroughly. Yeah. Okay. This is the reason I was able to tell. It's just that there are specific writing habits that, you, that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think that the most noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is that... They try to make their style very deliberate. 
In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form fit the two together. The end result is that both the style and the expressiveness are weakened. When Jerry finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is possibly the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice and learning by example, and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a little bit biased though. Biased how? Um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri is apologizing to herself, to me, or to Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. I have the hiccups. <laughs> Am I... Hold on. Hold on. Not sponsored. Yuri smiles dreamily as if that's a rare opportunity for her. Which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Ghost under star under the light. I, I thought it said under starlight. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow, bathing. It must be this one. The last remaining streetlight to have withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe, calm, breathing air breathing air of the present but living in the past. The light flickers. I flicker back. I I'm sorry I have such terrible handwriting. That was actually pretty good handwriting. I don't you should see my handwriting. My handwriting is like really bad. What? I wasn't thinking that at all. But it took you a long time to read. Uh well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Eh? That's a relief. Also, I like the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest. Since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? <laughs> Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Goshen. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it after all. But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost. Lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past. And soon to be left with nothing. That's a lot more solemn putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. Eh? Huh? It, it's nothing really. Yours was impressive too, so... Nah. If anything, I could probably learn a thing or two from you. You think so? Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, I was really nervous about doing all this. But in the end, I enjoyed it. I'm going to keep doing my best for you, Goshen. Uh, me too. Who should I share my poem with next? Let's go with Sayori. This is a good poem, Goshen. Are you sure it's your first time? Of course. It's not that good. Am I the kind of guy who would be writing poems in his spare time? He, <laughs> I guess you're right. But that's why it impressed me. Well, to be honest, I was afraid you wouldn't do it seriously. Or that you wouldn't write one at all. What you take me for? If I say I want to do something, I'm going to do something. Chill. I'm really happy that you just wrote one. 
It just reminds me of how you're really part of a club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the club in the club room. Uh, well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean I'll break my promise. See? It's like I said before, Goshen. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know. Trying new things like this for other people. That's something that only really good people do. Thanks, Sayori. Not sure if Sayori sees a full picture of my motive here. Then again, I can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her and all. Yeah. And I'm going to make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? That will be my way of thanking you. All right. I'm going to hold you to that then. Oh, wait. That's my voice. <laughs> I got too into her voice. All right. I'm going to hold you to that then. Yay. Now, you'll read my poem too, right? Don't worry. I'm really bad at this. Hee <laughs> hee. We'll see about that. Dear Sunshine, the way you glow through my blinds in the morning, it makes me feel like you missed me. Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed, making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish away the, a rainy day? I look above, the sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever. But I'm not mad. I want breakfast? That's that's random. I want breakfast. I'm trying to like see like what is in this poem. The music's changed, by the way. Interesting. I like I can't really see anything in this except that she likes to sleep a lot. I can kind of relate to that. Now that I think about it. Huh. Hmm. Sayuri. This is just a guess, but... Did you wait until morning to write this? No. Just a little bit. You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least that makes me feel a little better about myself. Don't be mean. I still tried my best. Uh, yeah. I didn't mean to say that it was a bad poem. It came out nice, or how should I put it? It sounds just like you. Really? Yeah, especially that last line. I made eggs and toast. <laughs> Even though you were late to school. It's bad to skip breakfast. I get all cranky. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyways, thanks for showing me. Hee -hee. This was so much fun. Monica's the best. Uh, yeah. But next time, I won't forget. And I'm going to write the best poem ever. Well, I guess I'll look forward to it. All right, so let's show Monica, because Natsuki's kind of a kind of a bee. <laughs> Hi, Goshen. Having a good time so far? Uh, yeah. Good. Glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything. If you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Are you always listening, Monica? If you're always listening, answer me now that you're always listening. I'll wait. Monica, are you listening? Monica, can you hear me? Monica, can you hear me? You said you're always listening. I swear to God, if it pops up, that she's like, yes, I can hear you. I'll freak the freaking hell out, man. Okay. All right. All right. She's not listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? All right. I keep that in mind. Of course, I'll be afraid to bring things up. 
I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. <laughs> Don't worry, Goshen. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? But it's that sort of barrier that we'll all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I had Monica my poem. Mm-hmm. Great job, Goshen. I was going, oh, in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical, sure. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I under- and, uh, I just had, like, word vomit. I guess I underestimated you. It's easiest for- Oh, this is my line. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That way, it always counts when I put some effort. <laughs> That's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyways. You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism. Unlike Sayuri, who likes using simple and direct words to describe happiness and sadness. Yuri likes it when readers are left to derive their own meaning out of it. It's very challenging to write like that effectively. Both allowing people to get something out of it just... Out of it just by feel. I was going to say feel by. Or letting them deeply analyze all of their nuances. It can take years of practice, which I'm assuming Yuri has at this point. I never really asked, though. I'm sure I'm nowhere near her level yet. Don't worry. So much. Oh. Don't worry so much about that. You do your own thing. Just keep exploring and learning by trying new things. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. It can take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. You know, that that's true for a lot of things in life though, not just like writing. Like you, you always have to try new things to find your way. Everyone else might be a little bit biased towards their own kinds of styles, but I'll always help you find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. <laughs> anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to not be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see. Well, let's read it then. Music changed again. Hole in wall. It couldn't have been me. See the direction of the spackle protrudes. Oh, see the direction the spackle protrudes. A noisy neighbor? An angry boyfriend? I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No! I can't see. I reel blind like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late. My retinas, already scorched with the permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep. Stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. I realize now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out. And he, on the other side, was looking in. I just got chills. I don't know why. I don't know. Like I don't. I don't know what it was. I just got chills for some weird reason. Hmm. Okay. So, what do you think? It, it's very freeform, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Uh, well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. 
I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep, deep stuff like that because it's kind of come coming from on back, coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. That's true. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on a piece of paper and tidy it up later. That is actually like really good advice for writing a story, writing lyrics for music, writing a poem. For writing in general, that's actually some really good advice. That could actually be applied to not just writing, but for a lot of things in general. That's pretty damn deep. Another way to think about this, if you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big dark puddle of ink. That's so true. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Who should I show my poem to next? Natsuki, that's all that's left. Uh, Goshen. If you're not going to take this club seriously, then go home. But what? Harsh? What? You expect me to believe that you actually put effort into this? Do you think I'm stupid? I'm not a writer. Maybe it's not very good, but yeah, I did put effort. We all start somewhere, right? If you're still proud of the first poem you ever wrote, then I'd like to read it. Painful to think about. Fine. Well, sorry. You'll get better anyways. I'd tell you what to improve, but you're better off just trying again. Fair enough. Well, to each your own, I guess. Anyway, I guess I gotta share mine now. Knowing you, you'll probably think it's stupid. Eagles can fly. Monkeys can climb. Crickets can leap. Horses can race. Owls can seek. Cheetahs can run. Eagles can fly. People can try. But that's about it. Okay. Yeah. I told you you weren't gonna like it. I like it. Liar. <laughs> what? Just be honest. I am. Liar. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly! I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts you more it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like, I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling in the last line. So you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? G yeah, I guess not. I decided to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. Whew. I guess that's everyone. I glanced around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even though just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club after all. I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayuri and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their ret respective poems. I thought it was retrospective. 
As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's this language? Eh? Um, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Uh, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you just completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? I I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh? You mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Um... Well, I do have a couple suggestions. Huh. <laughs> if I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it. And Goshen too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all... Excuse me. I appreciate the offer, but I spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless of course I come across something particularly inspiring. Which I haven't yet. And Goshen liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh? I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Eh, eh. That's, that's not what I meant. Uh, you, you just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Goshen appreciates my advice more than he appreciates yours. Huh. And how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? I, I... No. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Uh, um, is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Goshen started showing up. N Natsuki? Um, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you! I don't like fighting, guys! Suddenly, both girls turned towards me as if they just noticed I was standing there. Goshen? She, she's trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point in making your poems all convoluted for no reason? The meaning should just jump out at the reader, not force them to have to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, Goshen. Wait. There's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning the most effectively. Avoiding them is not only unnecessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that, right, Goshen? Um... Well? Uh... How did I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing. But whoever I agree with, they'll probably just think more highly of me. So, of course, what's it gonna be? You know what? We're, we're, we're going on the path for Yuri, so let's go with Yuri. I, I, I clicked Yuri. Natsuki. You're right that I liked your poem. See? Wait. That's not an excuse for you to be so mean. You shouldn't pick a fight just because someone's opinion is different. That's not what happened at all. Yuri wouldn't even take my poem seriously. Hmm, I understand. Yuri? Eh? You're a seriously talented writer. It's no secret that I was impressed. Well, that's... But here's the thing. No matter how simple or refined someone's writing style is, they're still putting feelings into it and it becomes something really personal. 
That's why Nasuki felt threatened when you said her poem was cute. I, s I see. I didn't notice that I... Uh, I'm sorry. But Natsuki, you took it way too far. Yuri means well. And if you just told her how you felt, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. Are you kidding? That's exactly what I did. It was her that... Natsuki, I think that's enough. You both said things you didn't mean. Yuri apologized. Don't you think you should too? Mm. Natsuki clenches her fists. In the end, nobody has taken her side. She's trapped. At this point, being defiant only because she can't handle the pressure. I end up even feeling bad for her. Um, Sometimes when I'm hurt, it helps to take a walk and clear my head. Sayori, she doesn't need to... You know what? I'm going to do that. It'll spare me from having to look at all your faces right now. Without warning, Natsuki snatches up her poem from the desk and storms out. On her way out, she crumbles up the poem with her hand and throws it in the trash. Natsuki... She really didn't need to do that. Uh, look across the room. Yuri has her chin buried in her hands while she stares down at her desk. I gingerly approach her and sit in an adjacent chair. Hi. Everything alright? I'm so embarrassed. I can't believe I acted like that. You probably hate me now. No, Yuri. How could anyone not have gotten frustrated after being treated like that? You handled it as well as anyone could. I don't think any less of you. Well, all right, I believe you. Thanks, Goshen, you're too kind. I'm thankful to have you as part of this club now. Uh, it's, it's nothing. One more thing. Um, that one thing that Natsuki said about, you know, I would never do anything so shameful. So, huh? What thing did Natsuki say? Um, well, never mind that. I'm gonna go make some tea. Ah, good idea. Make enough for more than one person, okay? I don't drink tea. Yeah. Okay, everyone. It's just about time for us to leave. How did you all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. Well, I'd say it was worth it. It was all right. Well, mostly. Goshen, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome! In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. And maybe you learned something from your friends too. Your poems will turn out even better. I think to myself, I did learn a little more about the kinds of poems everyone likes. With any luck, that means I can do a better job impressing those I want to impress. I nodded myself with a newfound determination. Goshen, ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. Whee! Sayori beams at me. It truly has been a while since Sayori and I spent this much time together. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Sayori, about what happened earlier. Uh, what do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki. Does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no. That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't... You don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, that's all. I can see why they make good friends with you. Phew. You know, Goshen, it's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club. But I think you get along with everyone... But I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you, too. That's... Every day is going to be so much fun. <sighs> it looks like Sayori still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but... Does it really need to stop there? We'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Let's do this. All right. And with that, guys, we are going to end it here. We're going to pick back up with me making the next poem. 
Make sure you guys hit that like button, subscribe if you guys are new. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching today. I really do appreciate it. You guys have a great rest of your day. GG, guys.